welcome to Greywood Gardening. It is the end of June and the cottage garden is looking fantastic. All of our volunteer milkweed here is in full bloom right now. And while the blooms don't look impressive, the smell is amazing. The entire front of the house, you can smell the nectar of this milkweed. But the really impressive looking flowers right now starts with the tip where we have this intense red of the bee balm and right behind it the even more intense orange of the butterfly weed which is another form of milkweed. We have just three little plants that were planted last year that are just huge and doing great this year. On top of that we have the lavender in full bloom and it looks beautiful. This is a Munstead type lavender that we planted last year. It is looking phenomenal this year although ironically you can't really smell it unless you get your face right down in it because the scent of the milkweed is so rich and overpowering in the whole area. In addition to that, our yarrow is now in full bloom. This is just eight tiny little plants that I started from seed last year. This year they are huge and providing us just a sea of greenery and flowers that makes a perfect backdrop uh, to the cottage garden mixing in with the milkweed. Best of all, there's not a whole lot of work that needs to be done. It's the end of June, so this is when weeding starts to slow down anyway. But on top of that, we're having this drought after this heat wave, so we don't have a lot of weed seeds germinating. However, we do have some work to be done over in the veggie garden. Let's go take a look. Time has come to pull all of the lettuce out of this bed. Uh, the lettuce is starting to bolt, it's very old, it's been very hot, and the leaves have turned really bitter. So this is not good eating at all anymore. Nothing left to do but pull it out, toss it on the compost, and plant something else in this bed. And that is today's chore to do in the heat. Now, if I was better organized and better at planning, I would have started a new succession of lettuce, you know, six, seven, eight weeks ago, planted it out in the garden like three weeks ago, so I would have fresh lettuce to eat right now. Unfortunately, I didn't think of this until you know, two or three weeks ago, so I have some lettuce started inside. I'll get it planted out probably in a week or two, but we're gonna have several weeks without fresh lettuce from the garden which sucks because there's really no reason we should need to do that. Yeah, that is not something you want to see in your lettuce. Alright, next I'm going to be adding some blood meal as a slow release nitrogen fertilizer because we've pulled a lot of nutrients out of the soil growing all of that lettuce. And I know from testing my soil earlier this year that the soil is insanely high in phosphorus and potassium and super low in nitrogen. So I definitely want to replenish the nitrogen before I plant the next crop here. As always, I like to work the blood meal into the soil a little bit just because it's such a fine powder that a little breeze can actually lift it up and blow a bunch of it away. So I will water this bed in and I will let it sit for about a week and let that blood meal settle in and start to break down. And then I plan to seed this bed with bush beans and carrots in a week or two from now. But I think it's worth taking a moment to appreciate 
how phenomenally the veggie garden is doing right now because this is the very last weekend of June. And this is the weekend last year that we were first planting out the veggie garden. We got it started so late because it wasn't until well into June that we got the deer fence up and then we had to build all the beds. So literally at this time last year, we were just putting in little baby tomato plants and pepper plants for the first time. And you compare that to what we have right now, we've been eating out of this garden for months now. We were eating uh, lettuce and spinach and radishes all throughout May. And now we've been harvesting broccoli and cucumbers. We've been harvesting our basil and our uh, snow peas. Um, for weeks we've been eating out of the garden and we're just a couple weeks away from having a whole bunch more things harvestable here in the veggie garden. The cauliflower right here is doing great and we're beginning to see the first heads of cauliflower forming. Our bell peppers are doing phenomenally well. We have some really big green peppers on there. We're just about a week away from having full-sized green peppers, even though it'll probably be another month before we have colored peppers. The snow peas, we have been harvesting snow peas for a couple of weeks now, and they just keep pumping them out faster than we can possibly eat them. We've been harvesting broccoli for the last three weeks. With the huge heat wave that we had at the beginning of June, it definitely got some of them forming heads really early, but the interesting side benefit is they've been forming heads at very, very different times. Our garlic is doing wonderfully and it looks like it's almost ready to harvest, just one, maybe two weeks more, and we'll be pulling up 40 uh, bulbs of garlic out of that bed. Our scallions and onions are growing great. The scallions are harvestable now. We're pulling those up and cutting them up for dinner. And uh, the onions, I was worried I had planted too late, but it looks like they're growing really well and we might have some nice red onions by this fall. Our sweet corn is growing fantastic. We're definitely gonna be knee high at the 4th of July. And the basil is doing wonderfully. In fact, we have already harvested enough basil to make our first batch of pesto and we have tons more basil to harvest. Our zucchini, and yellow squash are both growing really large. They're just starting to bloom. And assuming we can get male and female flowers blooming around the same time, we should end up with uh, our first zucchini harvest in about a week. We're right there on the cusp. I'm growing our indeterminate tomatoes up these cattle panel trellises and we'll eventually reach all the way to the top. Uh, over here is a Super Sweet 100, which is a cherry tomato, and over here is a Verona, which is a paste tomato. And I've been pinching off the suckers, but I let each plant have one sucker grow from pretty far down. So each plant is effectively two vines going up. So we'll have four vines going up across the four foot cattle panel. Um, we already have fruit set on all of the tomatoes. We have really a full set of cherry tomatoes here. We have a full set of these paste tomatoes, which means we could be eating cherry tomatoes at least out of our garden as early as two weeks from now, which is super exciting. I've also tried to do a good job of trimming the bottom leaves off of the plant, even though I suspect I'm being more delicate than I need to be and I should be even more aggressive. In theory, as the plant grows, you should be cutting off any leaves that are below the lowest fruit. And the reason you want to do that is twofold. Mostly it's so you get really good airflow under the plant to help keep it dry, but also to keep the leaves up off the soil, which is where the fungus often lives. This is particularly important going into July, which is our super hot and humid weather, although we've had plenty of hot and humid right now in June, um, because that's, that's the environment that uh, the fungus is that cause tomato blight love the warm, moist weather. And so by pruning the plants up, having good airflow underneath of them should hopefully mitigate it. Plus, I think growing up on these cattle panels, there's just gonna be such great airflow all around them that uh, the guys on the cattle panels are gonna do great. Uh, I do have some determinate uh, bush style tomatoes that are just growing on tomato cages. We'll see how those ones do, but I'm also trying to be even more aggressive about trimming the bottom foliage up off of those. 
An incredibly successful experiment from this year is actually these sunflowers. So all my life I have been told that you can't transplant sunflowers because they have a big taproot and you have to direct seed them. But on the British gardening shows, I see them start them in pots and plant them out all the time. So I tried it this year with these guys. I started these at the beginning of May in little three and a half inch pots. And then Memorial Day weekend, I planted them out at the exact same time that I direct seeded these guys that are so much smaller. And these sunflowers have been blooming for two weeks now. So the beginning of June, I had these branching sunflowers blooming. So I'm super thrilled by that. I think what I'm gonna do next year is start more of them in pots, but sp spread them out rather than plant them all in a clump. And then I'll direct seed sunflowers in between them. So we'll have these early blooming ones and then come midsummer, they'll be done and the next succession will be blooming. I think it'll look fantastic. I can't wait till all of these direct seeded ones start blooming and we have these beautiful sunflowers going at the back of the veggie garden. And welcome inside where it is air conditioned and cool. So we're here in the office today because it's the end of June, so it is time, or even a little past time, to be ordering fall bulbs. So I'm only getting a couple of fall bulbs this year, and the first thing on the list is garlic. So I am going to order the garlic this year from Johnny's Seeds, and I'm gonna be getting music garlic, which is a very popular hardneck variety, is what I'm growing now. And something interesting happened when I was looking at this garlic. I started doing the math on the garlic and the math was not working out very well. So it costs $9.75 to get three bulbs of seed garlic. Each bulb is gonna have four or five cloves. Each clove when you plant it will grow a whole new bulb. Unfortunately, even if you're getting you know five cloves per bulb, you're talking about basically 65 cents for each, for each bulb of garlic that you're going to grow. And at that point, you're not really doing any better than the supermarket. Really, if I'm growing it myself, I would like to be saving money as well. So I think the solution here is actually to spend more money and buy more seed garlic. So right now we have one bed of garlic in. I think what I need to do for this fall is plant two beds of garlic. That way, next year, when it's time to harvest the garlic, I'll have a bed and a half of garlic to save and use throughout the year. And that second half bed of garlic, I will replant in the fall to grow the following year's two beds of garlic. And that suddenly makes the garlic math look fantastic. I will then have all the garlic I ever need every year. That's a great price. I'm happy to do that. So I am going to get enough garlic for two beds this year. All right, in addition to the garlic, I'm also gonna get some, much, much fewer than in the past, um, flowering bulbs. And for that, I am going to Color Blends, which one of, one of my favorite sites for getting uh, spring bulbs like daffodils and tulips. I am going to get some daffodils, and I'm specifically gonna get uh, what they consider a naturalizing blend called the Top 40. And so this is just a mixture of 40 different varieties of daffodils that Color Blends thinks looks good for naturalizing and that hopefully over time will spread across the landscape. So in addition to the daffodils, I also want to get some allium. Um, the allium that I want specifically is called Purple Sensation. Now this isn't the biggest allium out there, um, but it's a good size. It's really attractive. I have a bunch of it already at Greywood. Um, for allium, the minimum quantity is 25, and it goes up in increments of 25, but I think 25 allium is all that we're gonna need, and hey, that's only $16. That is a fantastic price for 25 allium bulbs. All right, well, thanks to the wonders of the internet, all of the fall bulb shopping is now done, and best of all is Color Blends and Johnny Seeds aren't gonna ship those bulbs until October. So they'll wait until it's an appropriate time for us to be planting here in zone four before shipping those to me. All right, shopping is done. One more thing, we can check off the to-do list. The wildflower meadow here at Greywood is really starting to take off. The drought is definitely having an impact. In fact, the big area in the center that gets full sun all day has nothing but little stunted plants 
dead grass and almost no flowers. But any place that gets even a little bit of shade during the day is filled with just thousands and thousands of flowers. Right now at the end of June, it is mostly these uh, yellow coreopsis. We have some daisies, some sweet william, and I've even seen some yarrow just starting to bloom. So something that I thought would be fun to do today, I can't believe I haven't done before now, is pick a big bouquet of wildflowers from Mrs. Greywood. Now, I don't know a whole lot about making flower bouquets. What I do know is you need water to put them in right away. So I have a bucket with some water in it. I know that you want your stems to be as long as possible. So we would want to cut these guys way down here. And I know you kind of want to strip the foliage off. Um, so you just have stems. The final thing I know is that technically you want to have about 50% flowers and 50% greeneries where you just cut plants just for their foliage. Uh, I don't really have a lot of great options to use for foliage, but uh, we'll poke around and see if there's anything that doesn't have thorns on it that we can use. All right, let's see how many flowers we can get in eh, 15 minutes. All right, and I think that is about gonna do it. 15 minutes is up. Wandered around the fields a little bit. Can hardly tell that I cut anything down, but got a pretty sizable bucket of flowers here. What I didn't actually do was go look for any foliage plants. And there's actually some kind of weed behind me that might do the job. Okay. Well, it's not the prettiest foliage in the world, but it's foliage. It'll give us some greenery to offset the flowers against, I guess. Um, we'll see. I guess I'm going to shove all of this in a vase and see what it looks like. I need more of this first. Hmm. Maybe I need another bucket. And a flower bucket and a foliage bucket, maybe? Well, the bouquet building was taken over by Little Greywood with the assistance of Grandma Greywood, but I think the finished product looked fantastic. Just a huge bouquet of wildflowers. They didn't really like most of the weeds that I had picked for greenery, but they did like some tall grasses that I picked, giving it some little spikiness, which I think looks great. Really, I think we need to make a point of going out at least every two weeks into the wildflower meadow and picking a big bucket full of flowers because that just looks fantastic sitting in the middle of the dining room table. Okay, well that is everything that I have for you on this video. The forecast says there's a chance we might be getting some rain, so fingers crossed that we get a little bit of precipitation. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can email me at brian at graywoodgardening.com. And until next time, 
happy gardening.